Now, there's a very worrying bit of advice that I constantly hear other Golf YouTube instructional channels make, and that is about dropping the right side down early in the downswing. Now, this is being given to do a few things. It's been given to shallow the golf club. It's been given to swing more on the inside. It's also being given to compress the golf ball. But is it actually gonna do any of those? So dropping the right shoulder down, yes, it's gonna shallow the golf club. But you're not gonna be able to do the one thing you want to get out of shallowing the golf club, and that is rotation. Rotation is the reason why we shallow the golf club, so we can just functionally turn and everything falls onto the golf ball nice and perfect. But if you drop that right side down early, you're now doing an excessive bending movement. If we have any movement that is very excessive, we're now not gonna be able to rotate. You try to rotate, just stand up. You could be watching this video, stand up, drop that trail side down and turn your body. It really, really hurts. It doesn't feel good. You feel a lot of tension in that lower back because yes, if you drop this down too much and you try to rotate from there, you are going to hurt yourself for sure. So that's one reason why this is not a good thing to do. Two, people say, yes, it gets you swinging on the inside. And does it do that? Yes, it does get you swinging more on the inside. But again, we can't turn with this excessive side bending movement. So we're just gonna swing massively into out with a massive flip of that club face. Because if we're not turning through the shot, which your body won't wanna do it if you're side bending that much, you're going to lose control of club face. So you're going to hit pushes. You're going to hit little left ones, big hooks out there also. You're going to really, really struggle. So not great so far. Now the compression portion of this is an absolute mystery how they've come about saying that this gets you to compress the golf ball. Because spoiler, it really doesn't. It does the exact opposite. Now, when they say it compresses the golf ball, they say it in two parts. They say you've got to drop that right side down and then you've got to really force the hands forward because that drop in the trail side down doesn't get you naturally compressing the golf ball. You would have to manipulate it to do it because you hear my back click when I hit that ball. Again, it's not a good thing to do. So, you don't want to have a movement there where you're behind the golf ball with an iron and then have to physically do something last minute through impact to compress it by getting those hands forward. Remember guys, how fast is impact? It's very fast. The chances of you trying to manipulate something with your hands and arms going through the golf ball is very, very slim. So remember, we want consistency in the golf swing. Trying to do something that is a split second is not gonna be consistent. So if there's a move that slows down rotation, stalls it, you're not going to get shaftling because what creates shaftling, which is a main component of compressing the golf ball, rotation. So let's talk about how to do this properly. Now we can swing with a shallow shaft. We can swing on the inside. We can compress the golf ball and we can do it properly without really trying too hard to do it. We don't have to really manipulate with this massive side bending move. Now, do we want the side bend? Yes, we do. We do want side bend, but we want it going through the golf ball. That's gonna naturally happen. I'll explain how. So to get all these movements into your golf swing without dropping that trail side early, we just need to be able to sequence our rotational movement in the downswing and our bending movements properly. So to start the downswing, what we want to happen when we need a pressure shift, going left. We need that pressure to get into that left side this movement here. We might see top players in the world do this before they even complete their backswing. So that's what starts it. But as we start doing that, the lower body mid torso, so rib cage and down, starts to rotate towards the target. Golf's a rotational sport. We will turn and rotate. So that's gonna happen there. But the chest stays quite passive. So if the chest stays passive, the hands and arms stay up as we do that movement, pressure shift left, everything's separating and rotating, rib cage and down. Look what's going to happen to the shaft now. So I'm leaving hands and arms up, chest is being very passive. I'm actually gripping the club very, very lightly as well. What's going to happen? Look, see the shaft is shallowing. Look from the front on. What's staying on top of each other? Upper body is staying right on top of my lower body here. I'm not doing this. I don't have to do it if I'm sequencing things properly. So we can do these movements naturally on their own. So. Shaft is shallowing. My chest is being passive. I'm not going to be swinging out to win. 
So now I'm going to be swinging nicely on the inside, if that's what I want to do, swing on the inside. And I can get myself all the way to shaft parallel to the ground there, just by my body unwinding, because that lower body mid torso is going to go, the chest is going to start to catch up in that rotation. And now I'm here. So now I'm at shaft parallel to the ground, if we get a golf ball here. So, you can still see, my shoulder tilt is still very level. I haven't dropped it down yet. So you can see upper body still on top there. Most of those golf instructors will see you need to be here by now. You need to have that head behind the golf ball. Do you ever? So we're here. Now, how do we get onto that golf ball? We know ball's on the ground. When we continue to turn with that ball on the ground, the left side's going to start to extend. So we're going to have that left shoulder. It's going to start to go up and around. This is a natural movement that's going to happen. Left shoulder's going to go up and around. So that's it getting elongating. It's extending. It's getting taller. So what happens to the opposite side of the body? It will start to flex down. It will start to side bend. Side bend happens as a result of lead side extension. Lead side extension happens because you are gonna to continue to turn. You've still gotta hit that golf ball that's on the ground. You can't be completely level to it because that will happen, I'll top the golf ball. So you've still got to get onto the ground. The body will figure it out. It will start to extend the left side, which will be pushing pressure out the ground, really spiking force, and that right side will start to drop down from shaft parallel to the ground into the golf ball. So there's a brilliant drill to do for this. So the drill for this that teaches you the sequencing of the rotation and the bending movements is actually one that I've had before in a video and it was how to rotate in the downswing without even trying to rotate. Because if you use your bending movements properly, you can get all the sequencing of the downswing done perfectly. So what we do, we go up to the top of the backswing and then we go into forward bend. What's forward bend? That's where essentially it's like a little hip hinge, just where the pelvis goes back, chest goes down. So, get that pressure shifting left, and we're going to forward bend. As soon as I do that, look where the club goes. It's a shaft parallel to the ground already. So what happens here? Now, we go into the right side bend. Left side's extended, I'm at that right side bend. Look at the shaft lean. Why is that shaft lean happened though? It's not because of the bend. It's because that's forcing me to rotate. Look at the rotation here. Forward bend, right side bend. Look at that rotation. Didn't try to rotate. But if I just went from at the top, right side bend, where am I now? I'm in a terrible spot. I'm right here, which is one thing I didn't say at the beginning. You can see, where did my club just ground out? I fatted it. Your low point's gonna be really early if you right side bend early. So that's why you're missing the forward bending part, which is where all that nice separation happens, like we said before. So let's do a drill like that. We're gonna get up to the top which would be in left side bend at the top of the swing with rotation. We're gonna to get to forward bend. Now, right side bend. And to get to this right side bend, I want you to swing up a little bit and then swing through to gain a little bit of momentum. So, here we go. Forward bend, right side bend. Hear how good I struck that. So one more, let's do one more here and we're gonna really slow it down. You're gonna see I'm not right side bending early. I'm really hitting the ball quite good with sequencing my bends. Remember, there's a forward bend in here. So up to the top, forward bend, swing up a little bit and then right side bend. That was struck really good. That was struck really good. It's helping me rotate. It's helping me move in my bends properly. It's making my low point consistently be past the golf ball. I'm not gonna be really having the low point past the ball if my whole body is dropping behind the golf ball. Low point's governed by where your left peck is in the golf swing. If your left peck goes behind the ball, where's your low point gonna be? Behind the golf ball. Unless you do like what they say, fire the arms for it. Why have a timing element at the end of your golf swing at the fastest part of your golf swing? That's not consistency. Consistency is moving your body in a way where you can repeat the same thing over and over again. Ultimately guys, Really avoid dropping that right side down early. It does happen, happens in conjunction and because of other movements So, So you can get into these positions without doing it. So guys, if you like this video, of course, click that like button. If you want more golf instruction just like this, hit a subscribe button and hit the bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video. So be careful with what you watch online. There is an amazing amount of really, really good golf instruction. Even the channels that I made these videos, which is the vast majority of all the golf instruction channels, 
they still make some very good videos as well. So this is not me saying, you know, everyone else is terrible. I'm good, it's definitely not that. It is just be careful with what you watch and make sure you understand things to a good level of depth before you apply it to your own golf game.